nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Thank you very much. It's certainly a pleasure to uh, be here. Uh, I've been to Purdue many times over the years, and of course, uh, there was a specific reason to be here uh, back a while back, okay, that had to do with uh, some things that we did with the NanoHub. Uh, just to give you a little bit of the history, okay, it turns out that uh, you know, I was a member of uh, something called the Network for Computational Nanotechnology, okay, uh, which was kind of connected to the NanoHub, and the original development of the NanoHub, uh, 2002 to 2012. And I was thinking about this, this is like, oh my gosh, this was so long time ago that some people probably weren't even born at that time. Okay, and you know, comp computation wasn't then what it is now. I keep saying if I'd been here now, uh, boy, we sure could have done a few things a heck of a lot easier, okay, than we did back then. But in any event, uh, we did manage to develop several tools uh, for the NanoHub. I'll talk about them a little bit. Uh, and we contributed also some teaching materials, some online presentations, okay, and then, you know, so this is the deal where we had all this kind of going on here, and meanwhile, back at home, we're, uh, well, actually, we were working at home, too, for even on this stuff, but, the, but uh, there was other things that were going on, uh, such as, uh, you know, trying to develop educational uh, materials, so we did publish some of the papers in, in general chemical education, that's the uh, one obvious one to do. Okay, and, and then we did publish other things in other journals. We did real science in addition, uh, and I won't really go into that uh, very much, but, but more things related to uh, the NanoHub functionality. But in the end, the real science we did is what led to mo many of these apps that were put on there. So that was the, that was the idea. All right, so um, yeah, so we did, here's some of the NanoHub tools that we developed. Okay, I'll, I'll talk, uh, a little bit uh, about uh, one that we did that's called the Nanosphere Optics Lab. Okay, and actually over here you can see, uh, you know, I, I got into this last night, I said let's run it and see what happens, okay. And you know, it's, it's actually quite a simple code, okay, it, it just does simple me theory calculations to calculate the optical spectra of uh, nanoparticles, okay, particularly gold, silver nanoparticles, things like that. So I said okay, let's do that. Uh, gold nanoparticle, you put in some, you know, like you have to decide what the medium around the particle is, what's the size of the particle, what's the wavelength range you want to study, and then you just click go, or actually in the NanoHub terminology it's always like simulate, and then eventually uh, you get a spectrum, okay, and that's basically what came out of this. This was a, a very simple, uh, you know, uh, again, the the, co the coding is or the whole the whole code was actually uh, fairly routine to do, but the but uh, you know it turns out that that the good news about it is that this is a sort of calculation that you want to do often for class activities. Okay, and I'll I'll uh, talk in a bit about some of the stuff we did for that. All right, but then we did other applications. Okay, for example, DDSCAT is, is, a, uh, is a code that does better electrodynamics calculations. Okay, it doesn't have to be a spherical particle. Uh, the uh, uh, QC Lab is a, a version of something that we did that run, this is like a front end for the games program. Uh, the, then we did these things having to do with transport. Uh, the the uh, cyclopeptide ion channel models is, has to do with ion transport through channels. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, and then, Nanosphere Optical Simulator is, is an, is an add-on to this, uh, this one that gives you additional information. There's a couple of programs, TransPull and MolPull, that, that uh, you know, where you're, like you're, you're pulling out a, a molecule as MolPull, and, and TransPull has to do with transport, okay, through molecules, things like that. So, so we did a number of different applications, and these uh, tools are, are, well, they're not all still present on the NanoHub, okay, I, once in a while I get some email from from NanoHub and it says, okay, we've decided that your program can be retired and so it's retired, okay. Uh, but that's okay, I mean, in the end, science changes, okay, and we certainly would hope that something that you might want to have done 20 years ago is now, you don't need to do that anymore, so, so that's the way that works. Um, oh, and then, uh, they, um, 
This is uh, something that you can find on my NanoHub site. Uh, it has to do with uh, the monthly users of the software that uh, we put, these various tools and things like that. Okay, and uh, so it turns out if you look at it, you, so this only starts in 2010, but we actually had stuff on before that. Okay, uh, but in any event, uh, the, uh, if you look at it, uh, what you'll see is that uh, there was every so often a spike that went, goes up to like 300 or something like that. Okay, and, it's, and actually the first time this happened, okay, which I think was before 2010, okay, what that meant was, this, we were using this for a lab class that we were teaching, and it was general chemistry, so there was a lot of students in the class. And so, so in the end, all of a sudden, uh, you know, the, the uh, 300 students at Northwestern get online and they're accessing some website down here at Purdue, okay, and what do you think happened? Okay, well, it turns out that the uh, folks who uh, study, you know, network traffic were online and they suddenly noticed this all this activity and they decided that we were doing something illegal and they shut us down okay they they stopped the entire internet uh access that we had for this class uh <laughs> one day and didn't tell us of course that they had done this all right and so so in the end uh i we we dug around eventually found out uh, what had gone on, okay, and so then it was like I had to have a conversation with the folks involved and say, okay, look, this is a class and we have the software and the class and all that kind of stuff and it's gonna happen, okay, and eventually they said, okay, you can do this. Okay, so that's what eventually led to all these spikes. You can almost count the spikes in terms of which term of the, of the uh, was what we were, which course we were teaching, which term and things like that, but we did it over and over again for many years. Uh, and then all of a sudden, okay, 2015, okay, it turns out the, the person who was running the lab uh, class changed that, that year. And uh, so there was a new person involved. So I went over with these, you know, what we were doing with all these different types of things. And the new person looked at this one that we were doing with these golden nanoparticles and all that kind of stuff. And they said, eh. I don't like this. Okay, we're not going to do it. So in the end, it ended. Okay, although there were still little echoes of some of this stuff that was going on because uh, other cert certain other classes that were smaller were using this this uh, stuff. And so anyway, so that went on for quite a while. And then you can see now we're down more to a, whatever steady state means. But you know, people are still getting on there and 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 using this this software. All right. So. Uh, yeah, and then here, uh, I just asked the NanoHub to tell me, okay, what has my group contributed uh, to the NanoHub over the years? Okay, so we already talked about the, like this tool. Uh, the, uh, yeah, so they have something that's called tools, and, and that's the ones that we've already uh, talked about. So it kind of gives you several of those. But in addition, uh, there's things like online presentations that were mentioned already. Okay, and, and, and so those are uh, types of things. Okay, the, the, in fact, we did a lot of stuff with teaching materials. Usually what that is is kind of like a, like a PDF file that you might go on for pages and pages and give you a lot of information. Okay, but there's always an abstract in front of it that you can read and decide if you really want to read this stuff. Uh, the, and so anyway, so we did one uh, optical and thermodynamic properties of, of noble nanoparticles. So as you can see, we're very interested in plasmonics when all this was happening uh, and theoretical analysis of gold nanoparticles. Uh, yeah, and we also did this one about the, a tool that had to do with, with uh, uh, some work on coarse grain lipids uh, simulations. Um, and tensile mechanics, the transpole I mentioned, the mall pole I mentioned, so the, just lots of different things that we went off in different directions and different people were involved. And it's always fun to look at these lists because I can say, oh, that student is now, you know, became a professor at this university and all that kind of stuff. So it was, it's really a great story. And then actually there was a, a workshop. I don't know if you guys do this anymore, but there was a workshop at Illinois, okay, and uh, so those became, uh, you know, online presentations that anybody can access, uh, and so, yeah, there was this, so, so this had to do with plasmonics and various things, but these were all based on this, uh, this uh, workshop that was, that was at Illinois, and so, so anyway, so that was kind of a neat thing. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, more teaching materials, retinol, isomerization. Uh, the, uh, and then this QC lab I mentioned was like a front end for, for the games program. Uh, the, uh, yeah, more, more re related to silver particles. 
Uh, we did some stuff with candidates, cadmium selenide quantum dots. Okay, that became a lab that we use regularly for a certain number of years. Uh, and carbon nanotube fracture uh, was another sort of direction associated with that. Uh, the, we did some stuff on, on uh, and again, gold particle type stuff, chemical functionalization. Uh, the, the, yeah. And so uh, the other thing I wanted to, to mention uh, is this. Okay, so there's something called the Northwestern Initiative uh, for, for teaching nanoscience, okay? So the idea there was that uh, you, know, you, want, you don't just use one tool, okay, uh, to um, often when you're doing a research project, but you've got many tools and they all should be kind of linked together because you might take and do this calculation and then jump to a next, next tool, next, next tool, passing the data around, all that kind of stuff. We wanted to make sure that we could do that. So that was one that, that we developed. And, the, the, and here's some of the things that were built into it. So, so the, the heart of the thing was this QC Lab program, which was the front end for games. But then you could do things where you're looking at spectra and you were looking at, at uh, different theoretical models and visualizing the results and things like that. So that was the basic idea associated with that. Uh, and I'm showing you just the, the here, here's what the web page looks like when you run uh, the games program or, uh, with QC Lab. And you know, there's uh, the standard default molecule is water. Okay, and so we, we ran the water molecule. And you know, it has a, 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 a GUI interface that, that is fairly familiar, I think, for most things. Okay, so, so that was another version of how this all worked. Okay, and then I mentioned that we did pu publish a bunch of papers related to this topic. So these are all ones that, I mean, these are the ones that more were educational in nature, okay, that referred to the types of things that we were doing uh, with, the, uh, with the NanoHub and, and how it, you know, how, for example, you might then also, uh, this one on, on the teaching nanoscience part of it, included like, uh, material where you would actually assign, have assignments and what would the students do and how would they judge what they had done and things like that. So, so it was actually a, a something that, that's quite useful. And some of the stuff we actually are doing uh, now, I heard that uh, Tamiki Simeon was maybe down here recently and, and talked about some of the stuff that she's done related to this topic. Okay, I think that's it. And it's really great to have a chance to come back here and, and think about this. I, my research, research uh, eventually shifted away from uh, the software development stuff. So we haven't had as much interaction with NanoHub uh, recently, but, but, uh, the, uh, you know, but nevertheless, it's something that we still you know, think about. And, and uh, you know, it's always fun to, think, uh, to see what happened.